Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the next governor of Connecticut, Mark Bowden. Mike and uh, Jerry, uh, thank you for your friendship. And uh, look, Jerry, uh, he's ready, you know, and I wouldn't want him to uh, uh, take sides, if you will, right now, although he has to take ours. But in general, um, uh, we, we, I, we're very close friends. Everybody knows it. We talk all the time. Uh, we socialize together, and uh, I have the utmost respect for his uh, family. Uh, the Bowden and Labriel families have known each other for literally decades. Uh, and I call myself as the honorary Labriola brother. Um, so uh, we have a lot of fun together. And so I appreciate him here coming here, but certainly are, are sensitive uh, to his position. But uh, this is a big, uh, it's a big day for Phyllis and I. And I, I, I want to take a moment to say some thank yous because, uh, you know, it's not all about me.com. Uh, it's really, uh, it's, it's really about you. And uh, I've had the blessing and the honor of uh, leading the state for, or leading the city for, uh, 12 uh, plus uh, three months years and uh, too often times uh, I always think to myself that I don't take a moment to stop and just say thank you uh, for everything you've done. There's so many volunteers in this room when I look around at people that showed up to stuff the envelopes to make the phone calls. I mean for those of you that have been with me on election night, uh, you know how many times have I told you we're losing, we got to get five more votes out and you don't yell back and you just do it and I, I can't tell you how honored and thankful I am for you guys uh, allowing me to do what I do every day. I also have a, an outstanding family, and they put up with a lot. Uh, you know, particularly this lady here to my left who puts up with the midnight phone calls, the uh, the events, the, the the constant traveling, everything that goes on, and she the does tweets. the tweets. <laughs> <laughs> she thinks it's a little weird what I got going on. But, uh, and uh, but uh, you know, I'm blessed and honored to to be married to one of the greatest ladies. Uh, I've ever met in my life and somebody who inspires me. And if you can indulge me, I just want to announce my family because uh, I don't say thank you enough and I don't tell them how much I uh, care about them enough. So I'm just going to kind of go down the, the ring here and they're all here in the front and uh, I just want to just uh, again say thank you so much. So uh, my mother-in-law is here with us, Phil Skyda. I uh, appreciate you being here. I uh, appreciate that. Little Greg Guida, the best campaign worker, always on the phones for us, right, Greg? Uh, uh, Chris Ryer, uh, my nephew, uh, my brother-in-law, Greg Guida, his wife, Faith, uh, my sister-in-law, Donna Ryer, my brother-in-law, Kenny Ryer, uh, my brother-in-law, Nelson Moore, who's uh, been with me since uh, I've been about 21 and yelling at me all the way through. Um, my sister, Donna, who, uh, uh, you know, has been a source of advice and uh, inspiration over our years. We we're the closest siblings you can possibly have. We text, yell, and fight with each other at least every single day. I don't know how Nelson Sr. puts up with it because it's another fight that we got into uh, in terms of, of, of Donna and I, but I love her. And, uh, she's a wonderful, incredibly intelligent woman. Uh, my, my nephew Nelson, who's here with us today, is just a, one of the most compassionate people you'll ever meet. Uh, uh, Laura Lynn is here, my niece, who uh, is one of the hardest working, uh, uh, wonderful young ladies that you'll meet. And of course, Julianne Moore, uh, who uh, we call the star of the family, but uh, who's just a, who's a terrific person. And so I, I want to thank all of them for being here, and thank you for your support. So uh, as I mentioned, I look around the room and I see so many uh, outstanding and, and wonderful people and I, I just, I got to chuckle to myself because there were times, um, you know, when we were sitting around the room and back in the mid-1990s and it was Mike Finn and I and three other people or somebody else and, you know, we took this little idea, this little sort of germ of putting everybody together uh, on the team uh, and slowly, slowly worked at and, and kept bringing more and more people into what we thought Danbury ought to be and certainly how we can make a better community. And so I just want to thank all of them because it, it, it took years.
to do it. Uh, people think that it, it happens uh, uh, by accident, but it really doesn't. And uh, working with them and coming up with this sort of idea has sort of built into this, I mean, when you think about it. And so every once in a while, I'll take a step back and I go, you know, like the longest serving mayor in the history of Danbury? No, I can't. How did that happen, right? And uh, the, the reality is, is that today, this morning, uh, we filed paperwork to run for governor of the state of Connecticut. So, uh, so people have asked me, well, what sort of pushed you over the edge? Why did you decide to run for governor? Now, many of you know I ran in 2010 and had a, a wonderful experience go, traveling across Connecticut, meeting people and seeing parts of the state that I, I never knew even existed. Uh, there's nothing better than judging a pig race in North Stonington. There's nothing better than seeing uh, uh, the beautiful uh, borough of Stonington at sunset at, uh, at a summer's night. There's nothing better than visiting beautiful uh, cities like New London and and Norwich and, and Hartford and those places. But the reality is is that what pushed me over the edge this year really was uh, the fact that I oftentimes uh, do weddings in my office. Maybe some of you have seen me put them on Facebook and on Twitter and on Instagram because I know I do this stuff too much. Um, but um, and as people come in, as the couples come in, you know, they always make me think, you know, and I spend a few minutes uh, before I actually do the wedding ceremony because I want to kind of find out about who they are and, and what their story is. And, um, you know, I, I married people that, uh, two people that found new companionship in their golden years. I've married people that are a young couple where uh, they just met about six months ago. I've married people that uh, where one may be going off to, to fight in Iraq or Afghanistan and they wanted to come in and marry them. And you know, every one of those couples that I talk to, when I talk about what they uh, think of Connecticut, uh, oftentimes, they're worried about their future. They're worried about their ability to raise their family or to stay if they're retired here in the state of Connecticut. And so that has made me think over this last year about what we need to do in this state to be better. And I'm going to make a couple of quick promises. Somebody asked me on Facebook this morning, well, you know, tell me some promises that you didn't keep. And the reality is, is that I've kept every promise that I laid out in 2001 when I said I did what I said I was going to do, some of them are still in completion. I didn't say I'd do them right away, uh, but we are definitely have, have completed just about everything we said we've done. And I'm going to tell you there's two key things we have to do. One is we've got to keep our seniors here in Connecticut. We need to implement a homestead property exemption just like Florida does. So Two, we got to keep our graduating students here in Connecticut. Our young people are leaving. Just last week, a new study came out that said that people are, Connecticut is the highest state of people fleeing and going to other states and moving out. There's a reason for that. Our seniors are crushed by property taxes and are crushed by quality of life costs that they can't afford. And our young people can't find economic opportunity here, can't find a job. And at the end of the day, what is government supposed to do but create a level playing field so there is economic opportunity, so that that great education that all of you in this room have invested in that person graduating from UConn can take their skills and put them to work right here in Connecticut. So we need to keep our young people here in Connecticut, and we need to have opportunity for them. And right now in this state, unfortunately, we don't have that. You know, today the governor said in response to uh, my candidacy that uh, we are uh, stuck in a uh, ditch. He said, I didn't drive us into the ditch. That's what he said. So he's clearly admitting that we're in a ditch. He said, three and a half, three and a half years to call the getaway car or at least get the tow truck and get us out of the ditch. And he hasn't done it. Would we rehired somebody to do a job again that they couldn't do a first time through? <laughs> so the fact of the matter is, is that the status quo for this state is not good enough. We can be better. You can do better. Your lives can be better with a government that is truly in partnership with you, that understands your needs, your wants, and your concerns, and addresses them in the most pragmatic way possible. Now look, I emphasize team. This is all about the team. It's about the team of my family. It's about the team of the folks that are here. It's about the team of elected officials that are lined up against that wall that support the initiatives that we've done in Danbury over the last 12 years. And it's going to take all of us here in this room, this team in this room, to be successful in this race. 
There are powerful people, there are powerful forces, and there's big money lined up to derail ourselves. Big money. And you know what? I think that we can prove that a couple of people that started in 1993 in a little room who said no Republican can ever get elected mayor of the city of Danbury can do the same thing for the state of Connecticut. And that's you. Now look, I don't need to tell you how bad things are. You've read the list of last. You know it. I know I'm preaching to the choir here in terms of where Connecticut is. The question is, where does Connecticut go? And I'm going to ask for you today to help me put us back on the right track. To have a government that is leaner, that is more efficient. To have a job and economic opportunities for our young people graduating from college. And I'm talking not about minimum wage jobs. I'm talking about maximum wage jobs. Those are the jobs we ought to be arguing about. And how I'm talking about having an economic development strategy that consists of more just writing you checks of your money, your credit card, and giving it to companies to move from one town to another in the state of Connecticut. It is absurd, and I know I'm off into the weeds here, but I just want to share this. Just think about this. This governor and this administration gave a hedge fund $150 million of your borrowed money to move from Westport to Stanford. Now, if that isn't <laughs> offensive enough, the president of the company makes four billion, with a B, billion dollars a year. Why would we give him $150 million to move 10 minutes down the road? But that's the kind of economic development, non-strategy that doesn't work. We're going to put people in Connecticut back to work. We're going to put small business people back to work. We're going to put medium-sized businesses back to work. There will be a new day that will dawn here in Connecticut. I just want to thank, uh, we've got a great staff. Some of those folks are, are walking around in here. A lot of them have volunteered. They're working for literally peanuts. Um, but they are really dedicated to the cause and they really believe in, in this state. Uh, I want to thank publicly John Kleinhans, Chris Oliveira uh, for, for the hard work. Uh, uh, our staff at, at City Hall, led by uh, Joan Soderstrom and uh, uh, Elisa Munoz, uh, we have to thank them, but all of the folks out there, that, and Wayne Shepherd, and that, 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 that do a great job every day. Thanks, Phyllis. I got a DJ <laughs> We want to thank them as well. Uh, I also want to uh, thank uh, Dean Esposito, who spent a lot of time out on the road. And, and I'm going to blow Dean's spot up here a little bit, but you do know that Dean ran for mayor in 2005 against me. You, know, you guys know that? Right? And uh, you couldn't have a better friend out there that's looking out for me and making sure that uh, I get to where I need to go in the evenings and on the weekends. He's given up his time for free, he doesn't get paid for that, and I want to thank him publicly for that. So we got a lot of work to do. But look, I, I wouldn't be a good politician if I didn't make my pitch now. So here's the deal, right? We are participating in something called the Citizens Election Program. It sounds really easy. We have to collect $250,000 in donations in $100 increments. Uh, and then we qualify for $1.2 million for the primary and then $6 million for the general election. Sounds pretty good. That means we have to find 2,500 people that would give us $100 each. That's a lot of people, trust me. So uh, rather than me haranguing you personally, if you could uh, see fit to, uh, uh, in some way, uh, stop off at the table on the way out, uh, you can use your credit card, you can use a check. Um, it's the best investment you'll ever make. We're having a sale this month. It's only $100. <laughs> um, and uh, for that, you're going to get good government. And here's the great thing. I'll never bother you again about money, right? You get to come all of our events in the future. Oh. But it goes beyond that. In order to hit our numbers that we have to hit, you got to think of people like uh, your spouse, your children, uh, they're over 12. Uh, you got to think about uh, people that you might know that really are interested in seeing a change in the state and seeing us getting on the right path. And telling them and talking to them and asking them to make this investment because it will make a difference. 
I promise you. Now, all of you are sitting down, and all of you are here against the wall. I'm going to make one promise to you, and these guys are going to freak. But in January, when I take the oath of office, because you have been with me for so long, for so many years, doing all of the hard work, I want you sitting right up there uh, when I stand up and place my right hand on the table. see uh, our, our city chairman, Sal Shafalo, in the background, Shell. Thank you for being here. Thanks for being here. Right. So we got work to do. Let's do this, man. Let's get out there. Let's get the money. Let's talk to our people. Let's get our friends, neighbors, relatives registered. I'll come and uh, shovel your uh, snow. I'll clean your windows. I'll do whatever it takes. We're going to win because we're for a better Connecticut. God bless you and God bless you.